Hello everybody, this is Yasmin from YarkSpiriFantasyArt.com and this week's tutorial will be once again covering how to actually properly draw different textures and once again I'm only using the standard default brushes I'm alternating between two typical standard brushes uh, the first one is the default hard brush and then the default soft brush I'm only using those two brushes for these examples uh, for a couple of reasons the main reason is to show you guys that it doesn't matter what brush you have as long as you know how to properly go about using the tools and how to render um, an image so as long as you have that basic knowledge you'll be able to essentially draw almost anything now in uh, this study uh, what I'm drawing right now is I'm actually basing the drawing off slime mold a reference material that I found in just a typical Google search so I literally just typed in slime mold and I got some variations of this type of mold and I used that as a reference and a starting point from which to work this drawing now because this is more of a texture based uh, drawing exercise I'm not trying to copy hundred percent my reference material because I do want to take that element and wrap it around the sphere so that I'm working on uh, my rendering process in general um, but I'm using it as a base point from which to work now when I was referencing uh, the slime mold especially the one that tends to clump up together is that it has uh, almost a bumpy uh, texture to it it's a very interesting texture that it has and in order to create the same effect I essentially had to um, create high contrast difference areas uh, in order to get that texture. So what I'm essentially doing is uh, darkening up a general area to a mid color and then adding some uh, darker points and then some highlighted points to get that texture that I want. Uh, by doing so I'm able to get a pretty good texture for it um, but even though it's it's almost there I do have to go in afterwards with a separate layer in order to add a little bit more shading and to really solidify some of uh, the areas that would be in cast in shadow so I've just added uh, some of my more detailed shadows just to individualize some of those clumps and formations um, and that once again helps uh, make it look like a separate element so this was a really quick drawing um, this one actually took more time than most of my other studies for a couple of reasons uh, the main one was because of the amount of texture and amount of detail that I was trying to include in this and because it was so highly detailed this drawing actually probably took around an hour for this study to be completed uh, there was also the fact I hadn't drawn this before so this was really good study because um, you don't learn unless you actually experiment with uh, new material uh, so I was able to really experiment uh, with some of the techniques I was using and I was solely using the default round brush while working on this specific study so I didn't deviate with any other brushes I only used the default round brush so I'm just uh, adding some of that shadow to help reinforce the curve um, of the sphere and I'm just uh, adding some additional detail uh, to the top there so this one is almost completed and now I'm actually moving on to uh, an entirely new type of material um, I'm referencing for this uh, burlap material so I'm a, I am trying to achieve a very similar result and at this point I'm actually using exclusively the hard brush uh, because I've set the hard brush settings to a very low opacity when I'm painting with it it seems that I'm actually using the soft brush when I'm not uh, so like I said I'm using um, the hard brush for this and that allows me to get some more detailed lines um, and it allows me to build up the textures slowly and that is very important because burlap is uh, interstitched um, if you look at actual burlap material it actually has um, a very interesting um, alternation between 
highlighted stitches and darkened stitches. Essentially, you have almost these crosshair light portions immediately followed by some darker um, shadow areas right beside it. That helps give it the more stitched look. Now, achieving that effect is very difficult to do, uh, but if you can do it, it it really looks nice once you've completed that. So um, this was actually this texture was actually a request that was made through the Google Hangouts that I participate. Uh, and for that reason, I decided to include it in this tutorial. So you, as you can see, I'm actually adding the crosshairs. I'm adding the highlights now. Now this does require several different layers in order to give it that realistic feel to it that I'm looking for. Uh, so I'll go in, I'll darken it, then I'll lighten it immediately uh, following that. And I'll just keep on alternating between those two steps until I get a level of detail that is adequate uh, for the type of work I'm trying to achieve. So I'm just adding some uh, more strokes here, lighting up some of the darker portions and darkening some of the darker portions. Um, There's too much highlight so I had to darken that entire area and create a new layer so that I could paint directly on top of that and uh, rework some of those uh, details once again. So it's a, it's a lot of back and forth uh, when it comes to a texture like this because it is a very complicated texture. Now what you just saw me use is I actually used uh, the rotate option. Uh, you can actually activate that by just hitting the R keyboard shortcut on your keyboard. Um, and if you ever need to reset it uh, while you have that tool enabled, uh, you just hit the reset button and it'll reset your original view once you're done actually rotating your canvas. Uh, for a complicated element like this, it is a very useful uh, feature in Photoshop to be able to rotate your canvas. Um, but generally it's better also to get used to actually drawing uh, that portion without having to rotate it. So I'm adding some more highlights and I'm adding specifically the crosshair points. Now the important thing with the, the crosshair points too is to make sure to offset them because you don't want them to look too uniform. If they look too uniform then it's not as realistic because in burlap typically too there's a lot of imperfections. It's not a material that's designed to be perfect. Um, it's a material that's designed to be very functional and essentially it's just used to hold whatever item it's designed for. So for this reason there's a lot of imperfections, the stitches are very irregular uh, because you don't require any of that finesse in the actual material. So that's what I'm doing right now is I'm actually just offsetting uh, the information uh, especially with the highlights right now to give it that more burlap feel to it. Uh, the reference material that I'm actually using for this as well, I also got on uh, Google with the Google search engine. Um, all I typed in was burlap material and I was able to get some really nice flat um, images where there were some close-ups to the material but I was also referencing that along with bags so I could see how that material would wrap around a curved surface uh, because this material is different. Now. The way I'm drawing this, I'm essentially drawing it as if it's been stretched uh, almost fully around this. Um, and that's not exactly a realistic approach for this material. Um, essentially approaching it in almost a 3D texture type um, motif. It's better to do this at least in the initial stages because if I was actually drawing this on a character, I would not be drawing it as close fitting as this on the character. I would most definitely uh, be making a very loose, more light actual clothing because it is a material based product, but also because of the way the burlap is designed. It's not designed to uh, stretch comfortably and be all that malleable. It's only as malleable as uh, the filament stitching is actually designed. So I'm adding some of the darker elements in right now. Just helping to break that information up a bit more. Uh, 
I'm really trying to showcase the fact that there's several different layered elements to this um, and that burlap does not have that just that rigid look to it. And I'm experimenting now a bit with my layer options to see what blending mode would work best. I decided the basic blending mode uh, was adequate, but I needed to uh, remove some of the extra detail that I didn't need for this piece. So I just went in and created a mask on top of that and then repainted above it once again. Just adding a couple more highlights and I will actually be adding I will actually be adding a, a stitch line to this to um, show you guys how I actually go about that. As you can see I start with uh, my general highlight and then I go in and add the stitches. Um, I'll add my highlights and alternate once again with uh, my shadows. Uh, but because this is a finer type of uh, burlap, I have to go in after I do that and I have to uh, darken and lighten that stitching area and really show the individual fibers that would be present as well. So some of the techniques that you're seeing right now I actually used in um, that I did not record that drawing but uh, it's on my website on my DeviantArt account. I used it for uh, the Plague Doctor uh, character that I created. Um, so I included a lot of the stitching type material and uh, almost a mesh-like uh, material that the character was wearing for that reason. Just adding a bit more darkened areas, trying to up the detail in there. I'll go in afterwards and actually remove most of that detail, but I do require some of it to show. So I'm trying to tie in the amount of detail that's in the stitching uh, with the remainder of the areas uh, around it. So I'm actually just erasing some portions now because uh, I don't require all that much detail. Okay, so that one's done. Now, um, what I'm actually working on right now is more, I'm taking an existing um, sphere design that I had before and I'm breaking it up, uh, the metal texture on it. Um, and I typically use this technique if I'm adding uh, battle wear to a uh, metal piece uh, and essentially this technique can work with that quite well. Now what I'm doing is I'm actually using uh, the default hard brush for this but I'm actually using a soft um, eraser brush to remove most of the detail so that I get a harsher line on one side and then a very softened line on the other side. And that gives me a very unique um, painting. Uh, it has a very unique texture to it. So it ends up having some really harsher lines and then some um, more subtle uh, shading to it by doing that. And what I do after is I'm actually adding that in right now is I'm adding uh, some of the darker points, I'm tying in this pattern to the rest of the sphere while trying to up the contrast in certain key areas by alternating between uh, light and dark colors. So I'm adding some cracks here. Now I would normally in an actual painting I would have actually uh, switched to a separate brush if I was adding uh, some rust to this um, surface. However, because I am keeping to standard brushes, I will not be doing that in this case. Uh, it just means I have to spend a little bit more time uh, and be a little bit more careful as I paint, but I can still achieve the exact same effect. So I'm just bumping up uh, some of that extra detail just a tiny bit more. Um, as you can see, I'm erasing out any details that are just too much for this and standing out uh, too harshly. Uh, adding some more cracks here and there. I'm just tying in that pattern with the rest of the sphere. Just adding a little bit more detail here. This one's almost done. 
Okay, and that's it for this week's uh, texturing tutorial. Um, next week I will be doing another illustration. I will be working on um, a slightly more uh, dark piece. And uh, I hope to see you guys soon, so thank you and take care.